Here we go. What is up everybody, Tegan here with High Point Scientific. As you can see, I just unboxed the brand new L Ultimate Optolong's new dual band filter. They have the Optolong L Enhance, they have the L Extreme, and now they have the L Ultimate. As always in these in-depth reviews, I'm gonna take this out to the field and test it on the Veil Nebula. We're gonna see the results and we're gonna talk about who this filter may be geared towards. If you wanna follow along as I take this journey and test this filter, please stay tuned. But if you want to skip to brass tacks, know the facts, and listen to specifications and see the test results, go ahead and look in the description below and we've provided timestamps for you so you can skip ahead accordingly. Stay tuned. Now there is one thing for certain and that is, I don't know how many clear skies I'm going to get. So when we're testing the L Ultimate, keep in consideration that we may only get seven, hopefully 10 hours of data. Now here at High Point Scientific, it is important for all of us to be very familiar with different kinds of cameras and telescopes, imaging systems, visual systems. We are a very well-rounded team of astronomy equipment experts. So for me to try out the 533MC along with the L Ultimate for the first time, I'm pretty excited. That being said, it is getting pretty late, so let's go outside and put this to the test. Oh wait, we need to put together our imaging train first. If you look at the William Optics Red Cat 51 and the 71, you can take the back end of the scope off where it actually houses 48 millimeter threads, so you can screw that two inch filter in perfectly, and then you can put the housing back on. I go ahead and I attach 55 millimeters worth of spacers to the 533MC, and then I thread it directly into the back of the Red Cat 71. I set this all on top of my Ioptron CEM60, and then I load an 11 pound counterweight to counterbalance everything out. Now, it's time to test the L Ultimate. All right, let's go into the backyard and see what we're working with. Oh wow, that is a full moon if I have ever seen one. Oh look, you got Saturn right above it. And then you can catch Jupiter right over here. Oh, that is wonderful. So I'm set up in my backyard it's hard to tell where I'm actually pointing, but right now I'm pointing directly upwards, almost at zenith. Let's see if we can make it. There we have a single sub-exposure. Now this is a 600 second sub-exposure. It's not looking too bad with a full moon, seven or 10 hours of that. Um, that, that might look pretty nice. In guiding, I'm guiding at 0.74 right now, so also not too shabby. All right, so first night out is looking pretty good. Um, I have about an hour and 10 minutes of data. Stars look round. I'm on the right track. So far, I like my single sub exposures. I think this is going to be cool. I have a good feeling about this project. But right now, I'm feeling very immersed. There's crickets and I can hear the woods literally alive behind me. I'm imaging the Veil Nebula. I look up in the sky, my, my Bortle 7 sky, and I see the full moon and Saturn right above it and Jupiter. It's a pretty cool experience. <gasps> All right, it is eight o'clock in the morning and I'm gonna go check the data. All right, a nice beautiful blue sky. Looks like we may have gotten a full set of data. If you look here on the screen. Oh yeah, you have the uh, run complete right down here. So that means that we captured uh, about six hours of data last night. All right, let's go check out the data and see how we did. 
I upload all of my frames into a process and pixel site known as Blink. This way I can sort through each and every image to throw out the bad ones. That first night I only came across one bad frame. I looked at the subframes and they looked great. Alright, so all in all, not a bad first night of data collection. Let's transition and talk a little bit more about the Optilong L Ultimate itself. As far as specifications, I'm using the 2 inch filter, so it has M48 filter threads. It's a 3 nanometer dual band pass filter, meaning it's going to collect light in the HA and O3 emission lines. Seeing that it is a 3 nanometer band pass filter, you're going to have improved contrast, improved light pollution blocking capabilities, improved detail, and a reduction in star size and this is an improvement over the L Enhance as well as the L Extreme. Another cool thing to mention is that these filters work for rather fast systems down to about F3.5 or F4. And any faster you're going to experience band shifts or going to want a wider bandpass filter like the L Extreme. So if you own a Celestrat Rasa then you may want to consider the wider bandpass filter. All right it is coming upon astronomical twilight. It's about 9 45 p.m. I'm going to go get set up and hopefully we have a great set of data tomorrow. See you on the flip side. So it is 9 in the morning, day 2. Looks like we may have collected a decent amount of data. Look in Sequence Generator Pro. Okay, we captured 42 images last night at 600 second exposures. All right, that first night we collected six and a half hours. Last night we collected seven hours of data. You know, that's almost 14 hours of data. And I think tonight might be clear as well. We have beautiful blue skies right now, so. All right, well, let's go inside and take a look at tonight's data. So just like we did last night, I got all my subframes, loaded them up into Pixinsight, and went through each frame and removed the bad ones. I came across several that had some kind of clouds or odd vignetting, so I removed those, but other than that, we captured some great data. Alright, so all in all, from the first night and the second night, I was able to collect a total of 10 hours and 10 minutes of data. I threw away a lot of data on that second night due to clouds, but I only threw away one sub on that first night due to star trailing, I'm assuming from Meridian Flip. But considering the fact that I was shooting from Bortle 7 Skies during a full moon and with only 71 millimeters of aperture, the results aren't bad. But this video is about performance. Now I did test this filter on a rather bright star. It's 52 sig, the one that sits right on the top of the Witch's Broom Nebula, which is also in the Veil Nebula. I stacked about three hours of decent data and I saw no haloing. Now this is a star that is bright enough to produce halos in other brand filters. I didn't test it on something as bright as Vega, because clouds rolled in, but as far as I can tell, and as far as my testing goes, it's nearly flawless. Now, in conclusion, one-shot color cameras are becoming extremely popular, especially for beginner astrophotographers, and beginner astrophotographers want to shoot narrowband as well. The L Ultimate provides a fantastic solution to do that. Definitely a filter worth upgrading to. Again, my name is Tegan with High Point Scientific. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below and we'll be more than happy to assist you. If you like this video, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any future content about astronomy or astrophotography. Clear skies.